everyone, today I'm here with a very special guest and her name is Karina Axelson, author of the Model Undercover series. I read this a while ago and I loved it, so I'm really excited to be able to ask her some questions today and hopefully you'll find it interesting too. Hi, I'm Karina Axelson and I'm the author of teen fashion detective series Model Undercover. The first book in the series, A Crime of Fashion, takes place in Paris. And the second book in the series, Stolen the Style, which will be out in September, takes place in New York City. The book revolves around a girl on a mission to find the famous fashion designer who recently disappeared. I think that was a really good idea and I love how you incorporated French history while keeping it fun and exciting. I'd like to know two things. Did you have to do a lot of research because I know you lived in France and you also had a background in the fashion industry yourself? And if you did have to do a lot of research, what was the process of that like? I'm so happy you like the history in the book because I love history, especially French 17th and 18th century history. So for me, building up that aspect of the book um, came very easily and I had a lot of fun doing it. It was also really important to me that I keep the you know historical detail quite light and entertaining because I'm always keen that people enjoy history as much as I do. Now, did I do a lot of research for this book? Yes, I did some. Had I not lived in Paris for so long, I clearly would have needed to do a lot more. Now, I love doing research. The thing is, I love it so much, it's actually difficult to stop. And in fact, when I'm doing research, I don't like to make any plans whatsoever so I can devote myself completely to it. Because once you start getting the answers to your questions, you start finding more questions which need more answers which lead to more questions and it's just like this never-ending cycle. In fact the only way for me to stop is to step back and ask myself right is this information you're chasing down really pertinent or not um, and if I didn't do that I would probably still be doing research for the first model undercover book. <laughs> Now, I know you were a model in New York and you also lived in Paris for a while to be an assistant to fashion designer John Galliano. Firstly, I'm so jealous you got to do these things. And secondly, what do you think these experiences lent to the book? If you hadn't previously worked in the fashion industry, do you think the book still would have been about fashion? Thank you. Again, these cities are fantastic cities. Paris is amazing. New York is fabulous. I consider myself very, very lucky to have had the chance not only to live in both of these cities, but to work in them as well. My fashion experiences, I think, definitely lend the Model Undercover books um, a credibility that they wouldn't have had otherwise, even with my imagination. I think as an author, it's absolutely necessary that you create a credible world for your characters to live in. And honestly, again, I'm not sure I could have written about fashion credibly enough had I not had my own personal, um, you know, insider's point of view on this world. Fashion is a vastly different world from what most of us encounter day to day. It's a very clicky world, it's a very creative world, it's a world that moves at a very, very fast speed. It's very youth-oriented, and there's an extreme sense of fantasy and beauty that pervades it. So to answer your question of would I have set my series in the fashion world if I hadn't had these experiences? No, I doubt it. <laughs> Again, for the reasons I just gave, fashion is quite a difficult world to get to know and it's not an easy one to imagine unless you've actually been backstage, so to speak. So you no, know, my insider point of view um, definitely encouraged me and inspired me to write about it. I doubt I would have otherwise if I hadn't spent so many years in fashion. You're an amazing writer and I was wondering what are your top tips for people who want to get their writing published? I mean I struggle to get past the first chapter when I'm writing. This is a question I get asked a lot and my answer always starts with the same point and that is read. If you want to write you have to read, you have to love to read and you should be reading so much all of the time that your parents actually tell you uh, you know, get your nose out of that book. You've just got to be reading nonstop. And you should be reading everything, honestly. Um, you know, whatever catches your, your eye. You should also read the classics, um, you know, bestsellers, whatever. But just read. 
My next bit of advice would be to be bold. I always say be bold. And by that I mean go out, you know, do things, meet people, try new experiences, whether it's, you know, whatever, jumping on a trampoline, learning a new language, um, going to places you've never been to before. And um, I just say that as a writer, probably the, the most exciting thing and, and one of the most fun things is when your own personal experiences can feed your writing. This just makes, uh, you know, writing so much easier and it makes it a lot of fun. So again, try to experience as much as you can, whether it's seeing, doing, hearing, whatever. Do it. Now, there's writing and then there's writing to be published. And I would say these two things are actually quite different. Writing you can feed on your own, uh, wherever you like, however you like, you know, take your time, whatever. If you want to write to be published, though, um, you're going to have to take yourself very seriously, okay? Because nobody else will. <laughs> until you can actually show them, hello, here's the book, it's published by a real publisher, no one will take you seriously, and I mean no one. You might be lucky and have a good friend who does, but then count yourself lucky. So you're going to have to be a bit ruthless. You're going to have to say, I'm going to do an hour of writing every single day, nothing or nobody is going to get in my way, and then you just have to sit down and do it. Which brings me to my last point doing it. <laughs> a lot of people talk about writing and that's great, you know, talk about writing, but uh, talking about writing is very different from actually putting your bottom on the chair and sitting down to write. And the only way a book gets done is if you actually sit down at your desk and write. So do it. Here comes the stereotypical desert question. If you were stuck on a desert island, what three things would you wish to have with you? Ah, the desert island question. Well, uh, the first thing that leaps to my mind are my dogs. <laughs> I don't want to be on a desert island without my dogs. The second thing would be my library, because finally I would think, wow, I'm on a deserted island, this is fantastic. I would have all the time in the world to read and, of course, to write. So apart from my library and my dogs, I would want to have my computer. If there's no electricity on the island, then, you know, paper and pencils. And um, that's it. I'm set to go. Leave me on the island. Come back for me later. Bye. <laughs> and one last quick question. Why do you think people should read Model Undercover? Ah, why should you read Model Undercover? Goodness, I sound vain answering this question. <laughs> but I guess I would say to have fun. Look, they're fun books. I want young women to enjoy themselves. I want them to have fun reading. There are a lot of serious books out there. I'm thinking of a lot of lovely classics like um, George Eliot's Middlemarch, for instance, which is a fantastic book. And you should be reading this. But then, you know, there's a time and place for everything. And I definitely think Model Undercover will, um, or is something that should be read for fun. Um, it's got a great mystery, so uh, if you want to enjoy a good mystery, that's the book to pick up. I think it's also something that would be fun to read and should maybe be read because it gives a really juicy taste of what the fashion world is like. And it's a world that intrigues a lot of people, and with my insider point of view, I think you get a good flavor of what it's like from a model's perspective. Um, last but not least, I would say, why read Model Undercover? Well, another good reason could be to travel. It's a great way to travel without leaving your bedroom, right? So go to Paris with the first one, go to New York with the second one, and the third one, go to London. And for more reasons why you should read Model Undercover, you can click the link in the description to see my review. Thank you so much, Amber, for having me to the Mile Long Bookshelf. I had a great time doing this interview. It was lots of fun, and I really enjoyed answering your questions. Mm -hmm. So thanks again. Happy reading. Bye. Thanks to Karina for answering my questions, and thanks to you guys for watching. I hope you all found that interesting. I did. And don't forget that the first book is in all good bookshops now. So I'd advise you go and get your hands on a copy. The second book, Stolen with Style, is out on September 1st. You can click here to buy it or I'll leave a link in the description below. Karina also has her own YouTube channel, you can subscribe by clicking here. And she does book hauls and she's even done a room tour. And lastly, please give this video a big thumbs up because I'm so glad that Karina had the time to answer my questions. 
and it was my first ever video with a guest. How cool is that? Thanks for watching.